Our scripture reading today is from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One writer says, the truth is, if we want to have control over the tongue, we need to pay attention to our inner lives from which either blessing or cursing can come. Does the inner spring in our lives gush with both fresh and brackish water, as James mentions in verse 11 of our reading? Can a fig tree yield olives? Does salt water spontaneously turn fresh, as indicated in verse 12? No. What's inside a person determines the kind of fruit that comes out in the form of words. So we're called to cultivate the inner life. So whoever wants to embrace the life, says Peter, and see the day filled up with good, here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. Snub evil and cultivate good. Run after peace for all your worth. God looks on all this with approval, listening and responding well to what he's asked. But he turns his back on those who do evil things. It's interesting to watch everybody's posture today. But I want to tell you something. There is hope for all of us. How many are familiar with the dandelion? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many have dandelions in their yard and they didn't want them in their yard? Anybody? Yeah, for sure. You have this beautiful yard. Oh, here they come. Right? How many have picked a dandelion out of your yard and have eaten the leaves? Thank you, Veronica. They are very edible. Did you know that when you buy mixed greens at Brookshire's, guess what's in there? Dandelions. Yeah. Yeah, it's really amazing. But we treat dandelions as what? Weeds. 
They're not weeds. They're only weeds because we impose our lifestyle of our yards on them. And we want a thick, lush turf so that no dandelions will come. I had a neighbor in uh, Grand Prairie. Uh, we had probably 15 feet between our houses. Not zero lot line, but very close to it. And this, I took care of my yard. I put money into my yard. I had Kemlon come out. And boy, they got that yard looking great. It was the most beautiful, beautiful Bermuda grass ever. The bushes look great. And my neighbor next to me, dandelion. In fact, the wind would blow out. I always wanted it to blow out of the south away, but no, what would it do when the dandelion is getting ready to have its seeds uh, go blown away? The wind would come out of the north and blow all the seeds over to my yard, and then I had to worry about dandelions. You see, dandelions are kind of a pain for us. But you know they're beautiful flowers? Take a kid out into your yard or in a meadow and they see a dandelion, what do they do? They pick it. They look at it. They smell it. They enjoy it. When Stephen was reading this scripture, he said, Jack, I believe God's calling us to be dandelions. I was like, what? He says, I want you to see this. Watch this video. The dandelion in a field of weeds, as we would call them, begins to grow and bloom from nutrients it receives. And bugs and birds come and they pollinate. And then the dandelion goes into itself and builds itself up, encourages and nurtures itself until it has offspring. And it sends these good seeds to propagate, to send good seeds into the world by the blessing of the wind. And Stephen said, that's the way it is with our language. God wants us to have a flower to come forth from our inner self. He wants to nurture our inner being and have us come to the point we blossom, we grow within, we're strengthened, and then we send good seeds to the world.